Welcome to the next project. This is episode three of my ultra low dollar Fender Starcaster Goodwill Guitar Extreme Modification Project series. Third episode, it's going right along. We've added a little bit of uh, fanciness to the headstock, put a few water slide decals on it. We have one on the back that uh, pays homage to this was a uh, made for Fender kind of guitar and modified by the next project. So we're doing a lot of uh, final work on the neck, getting it ready for uh, final light sanding and polishing, and frets will be coming pretty soon too. And we're doing a bunch of work on the body, because as we start the video, the body looks nothing like this. Because I had no idea what I was doing when I started this project. It just keeps unraveling. But as we'll see, and uh, as I prove, I make things up as I go. As we continue, the next project. Working in kind of an elementary school fashion, I wanted to create a drawing of what I was starting with and overlay that against some plans that I found from, I believe it was a 62 Stratocaster, just to see how much difference there is or was and let my brain kind of soak in what's going on and start to envision maybe where I wanted to take this project. So here I've got my pencil sketch or tracing of the guitar as built over the top of a laser printout of that original 62 Strat drawing. I have a chunk of mahogany that is, I don't know, was it 92 millimeters wide on one side, 93 millimeters on the other, almost square. Just getting some ideas at this point. Talking myself into some things and out of others, but trying to form a plan. Maybe saying that there's a plan is uh, misinformation. I, I think the plan was really, what can I do in the amount of time I have and with the limited materials I have on hand? As I look at this guitar, I keep finding things that are wrong with it and things that I could just look the other way or I could cut it apart and try to fix it. Everybody's going to say, why didn't you just build a new one from scratch? And that's a really good question because in the end, that's almost what I'm doing. Here I'm routing out a big channel down the middle, getting rid of all the bad uh, factory routing. The pickup cavities are bad. The neck pocket was bad. The rear spring cavity is bad. They actually had something embedded in the strap button is on the, the tail end there. I hit a chunk of... I don't know if it was a nail or what they pushed in there to get the threads to hold. Exciting times. I just keep cutting away at the can of worms and I have a big channel cut right through the middle of this guitar. And I had planned to put this block of mahogany in there. And that may happen yet. I don't know. Where is it? There it is. But let go. As I keep cutting, I keep finding various things like this really soft chunk of uh, knot and just bad routing and various other things all the way through. This appears to be basswood, so it's a softwoods routing really well. But now I'm really at the point, now well, a few minutes ago, I was at the point I was like, I should just take and run this through the bandsaw, cut away these outside wings, square them up and glue them to my mahogany block. The only reason I don't want to do that is because this mahogany block does have a couple bad little tear out spots on it. I think there was a binding strap on the, the bundle of wood. But I can probably work around that um, and I just have to be resourceful how I refinish this guitar anyway. I was thinking about doing a veneer on it or sealing it up and making it a solid color anyway so that would be fine. Uh, the mahogany block is definitely going to be better than the soft basswood down the center of this guitar anyway. So I'm going to make a decision in the next few seconds and we are going to continue the next project.
I really didn't have to think too long to know that I had already wasted enough time routing away and I just decided to cut away the problem. I didn't have the right hand plane with me, so I used a block plane, which worked very well. But a block plane is really almost too short to straighten an edge like that. You should have easily a number five, six, or seven would be a lot better hand plane to use. But use what you have on hand, and I had a block plane. Now I'm adding a little bit of tight bond glue and smashing it to the maple block run down the middle. Put a couple clamps on each end to keep the body wings from sliding back and forth out of alignment and then clamping across the body wings to squeeze them to the mahogany. Once everything is dry, I removed the clamps, peeled off some wax paper so I didn't glue it to my bench, and everything's looking good. And to be honest, I could have done a little bit better job gluing it together. Um, the two wings weren't perfectly aligned to each other um, height-wise. Uh, one floated about a 64th of an inch off of the other. So I uh, clamped it to the bench and basically planed the whole thing to a uniform thickness. So no harm, no foul. Uh, put more tape on it, flip it over, and stick it back to the bench, and level out the other side. All the leveling done, I uh, got to a uniform thickness, chased a little gnat off the bench there, taking it to the bandsaw, trimming the end off so it's a little bit closer where it needs to be. On to the oscillating belt sander, getting it even closer here. And, uh, you know, kind of try and reintroduce that arm bevel just a little bit. Ooh, look at that, that's ugly. Ooh, that's actually pretty. Three paint jobs, not three coats, but three separate paint jobs on this beauty. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, the plan has evolved or changed or gone off course again. I drilled a few pilot holes and we're going to turn this into a rear access cavity control strat of some sort. We're going to call that. Using my uh, drop-in bench top router table ghetto setup with uh, my little oscillating spindle sander dropped in there and just doing a little cleanup work. A little uh, cleanup routing within the, uh, what is that, the output jack hole or cavity just to get some of the ugly routing that came from the factory out of there. Just trying to make it pretty, making it look like somebody actually cares. I don't know who that be, but somebody cares. Let me know who cares. Leave a message in the comments. Here, I think I'm just getting a little bit excited, maybe a little bit ahead of myself. Starting to design a cover template for the guitar. You know, I'm not even close to being ready to cut a cover for this thing, but it seemed like a fun thing to do. So I grabbed a chunk of MDF, a few Forstner bits, uh, traced the inside shape of the cavity, and then tried to create a uniform outer, where a cavity cover would go, shape punching out my corner radius holes, and then I use the jigsaw to clean it up a little bit, get closer to the line. And then here I'm taping on some scrap chunks of MDF. I don't throw anything away. This is why. I use all those scraps as little um, straight edge guides, or maybe not always straight, but guides for when I do a little bit of routing. And we're gonna throw this on the router table and clean that up and make it almost pretty. Cleaning it up with a little bit of sandpaper to actually make it pretty. And that's about all there is to it. Kind of a simple process, but you know, we have to use what we have. And here we're tracing it on, and that's what the cavity cover will look like. Maybe, maybe not, but at the moment. Okay, you caught me. I lied. 
That template wasn't for the cavity cover. It was for the cavity that the cover will drop into. Ah. Anyway, this is going to be the start of a template for the cavity cover. However, I made this pretty tight. Uh, I don't have a CNC. I just had to do this by hand. Sand and fit and sand and fit. Thing is, I do need to reduce the size of this template just a little bit. So when I cut my cavity cover, it will actually fit in the hole once there is finish on the guitar. As it is right now, it's too tight. If I put a coat of paint on the guitar, that would not fit in the hole. So there will be a little bit more sanding to reduce it in size. It's time for decoration. We are adding a new water slide decal to the headstock on the front. I ordered these from Pops Decals, uh, which I found on eBay. I'll put a link to all of his information um, in the description of this video. I'm also doing some water slide decals uh, that I made myself. Uh, this is clear water slide decal material that you run through a laser printer. This is laser printer decal material, not inkjet decal material. There's a difference. If you have an inkjet printer, get inkjet decal material. If you have a laser printer, get laser printer decal material. Then, before you do anything, you need to get a good fixative, a clear coat. This is a Rust-Oleum 2K clear, or 2, 2X, 2X clear. It means double coverage. Um, you give it a, a light coat or two of this, let it set for like a day to dry out, and what that does is it protects in this case, the toner, the laser printer toner that's on the decal, keeps it from flecking off or flaking off or scratching off as easily. Same thing with this. This is a very delicate decal. You can scratch it and then it will be erect, delicate decal. So give it a, a light coat of a lacquer or a light coat of this product. Let it set. Then it will get trimmed out carefully, 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 trimmed out, soaked in water, and transferred on to the surface. Great instructions included with this decal. Uh, and we're going to take a look at those and look at how I alter things. Not recommended, not guaranteed to work for you, but this is how I'm going to do it. Well, let's continue the next project. Here I'm spraying a protective coating on the face of the decals. The golden black one I did get from a gentleman, um, Pops Decals, on eBay. And I'll leave some information where you can find um, him and place an order for your guitar projects. And this is a water slide laser decal. I made that one myself. I used my uh, little laser printer at home. They are different, but I did spray the top surface of both to protect them. My little laser one is just baked toner, basically, and I don't know what is used for the nice gold and black one that I, I received from Pops Decals. His information uh, suggests using a lacquer or a urethane fix, basically protective coating, and then be very gentle with these because you can scratch that pretty easy. Soak the decal in water to release it, and this is where I don't follow the instructions. I actually dropped the water slide decal into a puddle of true oil and then gently worked all the bubbles out. It's not as easy as I'm making it sound, but it turned out really well. And this is before there's any finish coat. This is just the decal stuck in true oil and set aside to dry for about a day. I'm not even sure how many final coats I put of true oil over the top of the decals. Um, probably about a dozen total. A very light, wipe them on light, not puddling it up. Uh, after I put on two or three coats, letting it dry in between, I did very, very gently sand the top to try and get the, the top surfaces smoothed out and just keep applying. And here we're seeing pretty much the finished uh, step short of being polished. I still need to lightly scuff it and polish it to get rid of my uh, kind of rag or brush strokes. But that's it. Not a lot of magic, just a lot of repetitive work. That's kind of the way it goes. 
I would like to thank everybody for sticking with me through the project up to this point and we have reached the end of this video so please if you haven't already please subscribe hit that bell it does something good hit the thumbs up that also tells I guess YouTube that this is a worthwhile video to watch please leave a comment I love hearing from everybody all around the world and until next time take care of yourself and those around you bye